Sweet. So uh, the first, uh, the first most important thing in a podcast is to make sure your microphone's on. Um, so I would say definitely listen to other podcasts. Before I did my podcast, I listened to a bunch of tech podcasts, everything from things like This Week in Tech. Um, when I was doing it, there was no This Week in Google. Um, you know, I was listening to Paul.com security podcast, Mike Tech shows. These are longer ones. And, um, you know, I also listened to some knitting podcasts because I knit. So I was listening to, yeah, knitting podcasts like Lime and Violet. That's old school. Brenda Dane's cast on. You know, so I have a couple of them. And when I was listening to them, I would listen to a bunch at a time because I would, you know, commute and listen to like an hour of audio at a time. And with things like, you know, This Week in Tech or SDR News, you know, where it did like five minutes at a time, I would listen to a bunch at a time, if you're listening to a five-minute podcast, and the first identifying feature didn't come until like 30 seconds in. It was after their intro. And so I was like, okay, when I do a podcast, I'm definitely going to make sure that the identifying info happens first because, and it's not just the identifying info, like this is episode number 76 and it's, you know, January 27th. Like that's not really good identifying information. You don't know if you've heard that podcast or not, but the title of it or the subject of it, you know, today we're going to talk about MySQL backups. You might remember if you heard that and then you can hit fast forward and be like, okay, I've already heard that. Um, and make sure to steal from the best. So not just uh, take what people are doing and you know say, oh, I don't like that in my podcast. I'm going to do different. But do it, do it. You know, steal from the best. Lime and Violet did bloopers at the end of their show, and so I do that because it, it really makes people listen to the end of the show because they're hilarious to hear all the times that you stutter over a sentence. Um, and we do have a sponsor, you know, a couple of sponsors and stuff like that. So it helps. And we just say their name. You know, it's sponsored by this and that. So it helps kind of people get that. You know, get that feedback there. Um, so yeah, that's all the notes I have on this slide. Uh, life is hard. Who here has like tons of time in their day? Yeah, oh, you do. Okay, great, sweet. That's why you want to start a podcast. Um, podcasts take a lot of time between coming up with an idea, researching it, right? Because you want to make sure that you're up to date on your topic and you have all the stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, after a couple, the first couple of podcasts, I realized I needed to write a script because I can't just go ad hoc. Um, and then, you know, researching it, writing it down, recording it, and then editing it. I was spending eight hours to get half an hour of audio, which is a lot of time. And, you know, I don't know if I was fast or slow, but it took a long time. So um, I actually learned that my favorite podcast to do were interviews because there was some research beforehand or whatever. There wasn't so much writing a script. It was just writing questions. Um, the editing was a little tough. Um, you know, uh, I, I do have a, a friend who called Brian Aker the king of the ums. <laughs> So uh, sometimes interviews can get a little tricky, um, but you do, you know, you, you get through it. And, and so I decided, actually, I started it doing solo. The first 25 episodes were solo, episodes 0 through 24. And then I decided to go off and have a, well, I had a hiatus. I kind of pod faded for a while. That's the terminology for it. Um, and then I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I want to get an audio engineer because I personally did not like the editing part of it. Um, I love the research. I like the recording. I had no problem like posting the show notes, and we'll talk about show notes in a second. But I didn't want to sit there editing it, um, and I also wanted a co-host. So I actually um, was lucky enough to get sponsored um, by Oracle to do to get uh, to actually pay someone to do the editing, which is nice. Um, and I also noticed that the discussion kind of flowed better. It's like a back and forth um, in the podcast where you're doing that. So, you know, try to make things easier to yourself. See what you can do. See what you can't do. Maybe you have a friend who wants to help by editing or help by publishing. Um, there are some decisions you have to make when you're doing a podcast. You know, we just talked about, are you going to do it alone? Are you going to do a co-host? Are you going to do an interview every single time you do a podcast? You know, th those have different ramifications. Alone, you can start researching it at midnight. You can record it at midnight. Nobody cares. Maybe your family, um, people who are around. But you don't have to wait for your co-host. Um, now, my co-host is remote, so that's not a problem. Um, and I'll explain how we do that in a bit. Um, but with an interview or co-host, you have to, you know, sync up times, which can be a little difficult. Uh, frequency, how often are you going to do it? Are you going to do weekly, daily, monthly, yearly, quarterly, whenever you feel like it? Um, are you going to edit it or not? So a lot of people will do like a live radio show. You know, they, maybe they'll stream it, maybe they don't, but they just basically record it. One of my favorite podcasts actually for a long time was Penn Jillette had a, uh, had a radio show and made that into a podcast. It was the funniest thing ever, but it was just an hour long and they just recorded their radio show and hmm, no editing. Um, and, you know, will you try to get sponsors or funding? Um, if you've ever listened to a podcast, you know that most of them are, like, sponsored by audiobooks and all that kind of stuff, and you're like, oh, what a pain in the butt to listen to it. But, you know, money is useful, um, and it can help you get things and make your life a little easier. So there you go. And are you going to script it or not? 
So that gets to preparation. So you've got show notes. So I like to think of my show notes as my agenda plus my minutes, right? So my show notes, I'll write out stuff that I, you know, topics I want to talk about beforehand. And as we're, we're talking about it, you know, my co-host and I are talking about it, we might realize something in the moment. We'll talk about it. But, you know, if, we're if we say something, you know, we'll say, oh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Sometimes, you know, we want to make sure that it's there. So we'll put a little note in the, as we're doing it. So we use, uh, we use Google Docs for this. Um, so yeah, research your topic. Um, make sure you get names and companies correct. If you're thanking people or something like that, you want to make sure that you're thanking the right people. You want to make sure you're thanking all the people you should thank. Um, it's really, really important because, you know, if you, especially if you have like a sponsor, you don't want someone to not sponsor you because you got their name wrong or anything like that. Um, we use Google Docs for the show notes and pretty much everything. Yep, and if you do have something that you're adding in the middle, um, you know, it's okay to just pause during the recording. You don't have to actually pause the recording. I mean, just have a mo bunch of silence. It doesn't matter. Um, because you can see that in your audio waveforms. And then you can say, like, OK, that's where I need to cut out. So how do you record? So do you record on your computer, right? Macintosh has an onboard mic. Maybe, maybe some PCs do. I don't know if they do these days or not. They used to not, which is kind of a pain. Um, you can use a sound recorder. Some people might use their iPhone. Um, you might use a specific device. You might use something web-based. You know, if you're streaming, you might use something which is basically your computer, right? So you might, it's not, obviously not some microphone out there on the web. But you're using your computer and maybe you're streaming it. Um, and what microphone? What microphone are you going to use? Are you going to use the onboard microphone? Um, when you have a Macintosh, it does this really cool thing called auto attenuation. What that means is, if you're, it tries to keep the volume at a certain level. So I'm talking at a certain level. It's pretty loud, as my coworkers know. And uh, you know, if I get really soft, the Mac will adjust it so that my soft is really loud. And that is great, except when you're in any place that might have, oh, I don't know, air conditioning that might kick in. So all of a sudden, it goes And you get this, like, all of a sudden, your voice is now really, really low because the thing kicked in and the Mac was like, oh, that's a loud sound, so I'll turn the volume down really low. So you have to be careful about that kind of thing. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting just you and not the environment around you as much as possible, right? You know, it's, there's some things you can't help. Um, so preferably, recording should be a separate device from your computer, especially if you're using your computer. Computers have fans. You're going to get all that fan noise. Um, if you're typing, you're going to hear those clicks a lot more if you're typing on the microphone. So the, the question is, can, does that mean don't use your onboard microphone but plug your microphone in your computer? And the answer is, theor not theoretically, um, preferably no. Preferably it is a separate device because if you're using your computer for anything, you've got CPU going, you've got cycles going, it might skip like half a second of recording. Um, you know, computers are getting better and better and better, right? I started my podcast in 2007, um, and things are a whole lot better. So preferably no, but if that's what you have, great. I'm going to show you some examples of some things that don't do the most preferable way, and they're still up on the web. So what can you record with? There's a bazillion computer recording programs. I'm not going to go through all of them, because a bazillion is too many. Um, but including Audacity, right? If you're like, is Audacity good enough? Yes, it's good enough. The funny story behind this, I first did this a couple of years ago at OSCON, and uh, my experience with Audacity back in 2007 was like, it's crap. It's just not good. And then I was like, well, let's, like, I was talking to my audio engineer. I'm like, can you do some samples and we'll do some things and we'll, like, record a Skype call between me and you and I'll show you, like, how much it stinks in, in Audacity to, like, do the auto voice removal and now you sound like a space alien and you'll do it on your software and, like, we'll see the difference. And, like, there was almost no difference <laughs> because it, because at, in five years it had progressed. So, you know, or four years. So it was really, so Audacity is good. If you're asking, can I record with it? Yes. And, of course, this goes back to your question. You can't record with Audacity without plugging it in. So, you know, I'm not going to say don't do it, right? If that's what you can do, that's what you can do. It's not as good as a separate device. But there are handheld devices, or maybe not, maybe there's non-portable devices, I don't know, it's a little weird. Um, and they, they might have onboard mics, they might also have external mics. Um, so think about what you're using. If you're using an onboard mic, know what kind of microphone it is, and if you're buying an external mic, learn what kind of microphones they are. So what do you mean by what kind of microphone? Well, if you go to this Wikipedia article on microphones, you'll understand what I mean. There's all sorts of, like, there's unidirectional mics that will get everything in one direction. So 
you know, it won't necessarily get that or that, but it will get this. Um, there are, you know, microphones that will get all the ambient sound, um, which hopefully this one is, because I just moved, the, moved it all around. Um, and there are, the microphone that I use is actually a, a super cardioid. So a cardioid is a unidirectional mic, and that's kind of the direction it goes in. So it comes from, if this was the microphone, it comes from here and goes around like that. So you get most of the sound, but, you know, if the air conditioning's going on, you won't get it as much. If I actually podcast where the microphone's like this, my computer is behind the microphone, so when I type, it doesn't get as much because it's only getting that much sound. Um, and it, yeah, it helps avoid picking up other noises. So um, other sounds, when you're recording, you know, I haven't been looking at my notes, which is probably a bad idea, um, but I reviewed them beforehand. So um, these, there are some good sounds that you record. If you're recording over Skype, for example, you want to be able to hear that. But let's say you are recording over Skype. Do you, you know, and somebody... I am you on Skype, and you get that boop, boop. You know, do you really want that to be recorded? We have no choice, right? You're using Skype. You have to have it on to talk to someone. Um, you know, if the uh, if you're talking on the phone, right? You want to be able to record the other end of the phone call. Um, if you're doing music and and doing it live or something, you might want to be able to record that. Um, but there's also bad sounds, traffic or street noise. I used to, <laughs> I would podcast at nine in the morning my time, six in the morning um, my co-host's time, and there would be garbage trucks outside, and we would have to wait because we would record Tuesday mornings. And guess what t happens Tuesday morning at 6:20 a.m.? You know, you do beep beep, and we, you know, so we just stop. When a uh, when an ambulance goes by or something, there's all sorts of fun stuff. Um, ringing phones. Um, you know, hotel rooms are really bad. This would be a bad room to record in because the sound reverberates. Um, computer sounds, you know, turn off your IM clients, turn off your phone, you know, all that, well, put it vibrate, any typing you do. So I've actually learned that when I want to type, I can, I just wait till my co-host is talking and then I start typing because you're not, they'll just silence that channel. Uh, people shouting for you, you know, my co-host has five kids <laughs> and sometimes at six in the morning they, they're like, hey, where are my shoes or whatever. I mean, they're teenagers, but. Um, when you're recording conversations, this is really important, it's best if everyone can record themselves. Does everyone know what a recorded Skype conversation sounds like? Let me, <laughs> I've got some examples here. Um, where's my iTunes? Here we go. So, um, let's see. I want to go to this, Meet the MySQL Experts. Backups everywhere. Nope, not that one. You know. This is over Skype. That is very, very, very difficult to hear, right? Compare that to um, where I was before, which is down here. Let's do this. Right, that's me. And that's me recording myself. Um, I could show you an interview, but if everybody records themselves, even if their microphone isn't as good, it's going to be better than through your audio and through Skype, especially because you get um, you get all that noise. Um, now, this is what I what we sound like now with an audio engineer that does this kind of thing. We do have our own theme song. I'm trying to get me. It's, it's all Jerry. Scheduler was developed by Jens Expo. The no-op scheduler inserts. So it's a little cleaner um, using, you know, the uh, the H4N. So what I'm using now, and I have a picture of it. Um, I'm using a super cardioid mic, like I said, just a regular Shure SM58. I have a little thing for the, you know, so I don't pop my peas and 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 good and whatever. Don't don't sound so bad. Um, Yes. Do I have a name for this thing? Uh, this uh, pop filter, or is or it's actually not a pop filter. Pop filter is one of those things that's uh, like a, just a screen, a windscreen usually. Wind sock, yeah. Not wind sock, wind sock. A dead cat. Okay, well there you go. I don't know if Amazon sells dead cats though. If you're going to Amazon.com. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, you have all the you have all the data. So, wind windsock, dead cat, um, redundancy. Yes. What was the name of the store? Music. Better music in Philip Canberra. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, don't go to like Best Buy. Go to a, a good, you know, music store like that and and find find a mic. Um, I had an audio engineer, so I just asked him, "What should I buy?" Here's the budget, and he was like, "Here, buy this," and I did. Um, if you are recording other people, like I have a co-host, we talk via. I think we talk via Google Hangouts, but we've done it over Skype. But basically, whatever you do, I actually record my audio as well. So um, I actually use this device. It's really cool. It's a Zoom H4n. It will do everything you ever want to do, and it's only a couple hundred dollars. The bottom has, uh, has XLR, so that's these round plugs that come at the end of this. That's an XLR plug. It also, you can't really see it, but in the middle, you can actually put an eighth inch stereo jack in as well. So it's like a dual function thing. It's pretty cool. So one channel, I put the left channel, I put my microphone that I'm talking into, and the right channel, I have an eighth inch stereo jack to the uh, quarter inch jack here, and I record the outgoing sound. So sometimes if like an IM pops up, I mean, I close my windows and stuff, but if something pops up, they might hear it, but that way I record my co-host just in case something went wrong with his recorder, we don't have to redo the podcast. I've had to do that a couple of times. It's really frustrating. Uh, and test it beforehand, especially, so if you're interviewing someone, if you're doing a different interview every week and you're asking them to record themselves, do a test phone call the day before and be like, okay, let's just test this and then send me your audio file and make sure that, that it's right because you might have to you know, record at different levels, make sure that you're doing the same like 44 uh, kilobits per second, something like that. Um, all the settings are here, so it's been a while since I've done that. Um, and this works really well with voice over IP because you're not recording the voice over IP. I mean, you are, but on the second channel, everybody's recording themselves. So if there's any blips or anything like that, you don't have any problems. So the question is, what do we do if we have someone who's kind of a newbie and, and you know, what do we tell them to do? Well, the thing is, since I do a MySQL podcast, most people are at least a little tech savvy. So telling them to download Audacity, yeah, I, we do Audacity and I say, if you have a headset, wear that. Most of the people I do talk to have a headset because a lot of people work remotely um, because otherwise you get that ambient noise and things like that. So we do that. We do a test ahead of time. Um, we don't ship a device because, again, it's a couple hundred dollars and, you know, what if the shipping doesn't happen and whatever and then they have to set it up. And I actually have this set up to clip low noises because my voice is a little higher. My co-host is male. He, he doesn't have it set the clipping so low. So if, I shipped, if we shipped a device, we would have to do play with the settings. Um, and some people have their own devices. If we're live in person, um, I have two microphones. My co-host has two microphones. So if, if we're doing like a group interview, that can be tough. But if we're just interviewing one person, you know, we have four microphones between us. So we could do a two-person interview. I've certainly done it where I take my two microphones and, you know, they get one and I get one and, and we sit across from each other so we don't have any interference. So you sit next to each other, right? You have this cardioid. It might pick up some stuff and you don't want to do that too, too much. Even though you're going to silence one channel, you don't want to actually have to go through and silence the channel all the time when somebody's not talking. Um, so here's the thing, very important, when you are recording your separate conversations, you have to do a sync, right? So my co-host and I, at the beginning of every podcast, but it doesn't matter, you can do it in the middle of the end, we'd go three, two, one, sync. And then we know at that point, like you can see it in the waveform and it's near the beginning. Um, that that's where you sync them up in when you're editing them. And uh, as I was saying, if you're trying to record someone over Skype and you're doing that, it can be really tough because, or any voice over IP, because you get all of the blips in the network latency. So, like I said, this is what I do. The only problem with this, now I've traveled to a lot of places. I've been everywhere north. I've been as far north as Finland, as far south as Australia. You know, I've been to the equator. I've been east-west. I've been to Israel. I've been, you know, and uh, I haven't quite been to, um, to, to Eastern Asia, to the east of Asia yet, but I'll get there. Um, the only problem with this is that uh, I think the TSA to security at the airport, it looks like a taser. <laughs> So I always take it out, like I, here I have my laptop and then I take this out because I, I, I don't taste them now. But I mean, I, they just always, because of the onboard mics. And now one of the cool parts about this is that these are 90, 90 degrees, but I can flip them and then they're 120 degrees. So I can actually get onboard stuff and um, I can actually use all four. I can use the left channel, right channel, and these two to get a whole, uh, whole recording experience if I really want to. Um, let's see. That's it. All right. So 
oh, it also can, you can also can put in markers in when you do it. So we put in markers whenever we're we're starting to chit chat. We'll put in a marker, um, and we put in a marker when we sync. There's a little thing. There's just a, it's a feature that shows up here. Um, and you can look up like H4N markers and it will appear. I haven't seen it appear in Audacity, although maybe since I, I last looked like a year or two ago. Um, but in some of the other, um, I, think, I think he uses Sony Vegas, which is a video editing software, but that shows the markers in the audio part. So yeah, it's... Some, some recorders uh, also do tracking, the same thing, you press the button Some recorders will also do tracks, yeah. But you, you don't necessarily want to um, split the tracks unless you can, you know you can piece them together seamlessly. Um, while you're recording the podcast, watch your filler words, words and phrases. I don't know if anybody's been counting my ums. They've probably been not so much because I have tried to get myself out of that habit. But if you have been listening to me, you might notice that my entire presentation is kind of one run-on sentence. Because then I'll say this, and then I'll do that. Like, I don't I mean, I have periods, but I try not to use filler words or phrases. My filler words and phrases are usually not um, it's usually basically. Basically, this is going to happen. And then basically, that's kind of like that. Um, and mouth noises. You might think your mouth doesn't make a lot of noise, but when you're not hydrated, you can hear every like lip smacking thing you do. Like every time you open your mouth, it's like a lip smack. I actually, when I was editing, I got like super, super crazy. And I would edit out whenever I, whenever you stop talking and then you take a breath, like I would edit that out because it would get on my nerves. It's, and it's kind of creepy. You actually can't do that. And you can't edit out all the pauses because then it doesn't sound like natural conversation. So what kind of podcast editing software can you use? You can use proprietary third-party software. Um, you could use Audacity. It's good. It's got lots of filters. It does lots of things. You need to increase the volume, decrease the volume. You can see two channels. You know, you want to be able to see every channel on its own thing. Um, GarageBand, which is proprietary, but it comes on your Mac. So, you know, you can use that kind of stuff. You can use it on iPads now. That's, you know, you can use kind of anything. Um, Podomatic.com is an online one where you can, like, upload the file and then do it there. Uh, we'll fix it in post. We love saying this so much. Um, if you do have the ums, you'll start to learn what your um looks like in a waveform. <laughs> you really do. So, you know, it's really hard though. The reason you want to avoid it is because a lot of times people will say, so, and then there, you know, or something like that. They'll go, they'll say, so, and now the sentence I want to say, and it's really hard because the end of the so is joined to the beginning, and it's really hard to get that cut right there. So it's better to pause and stop because it's it's just a silence in your waveform than to say that say um fixing it in post can be magic. I mean, my audio engineer is amazing. Um, it's Rich Gray at Audio Services, and he's based in New Hampshire, but it's all remote. We just upload the files. He you know, copies them down, he uploads his finished file, and then we actually just put it on the web. Um, so it can be like completely, completely magic. Um, he can take out noises that happen sometimes. He, he's just really amazing. Like sometimes I'm in a hotel room and, you know, the heating kicks on or the, the air conditioning kicks on and there's nothing I can do about that. I mean, well, I can turn off the air conditioning. Sometimes you don't have control over that. But I have, I mean, I've, I've turned off the AC on like a 30 degree day or 35 degree day when I've had to. You see that? I've converted to Celsius for you guys. Yeah. Not everyone can do that. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to fix it in post. Um, you really can't get, it's like if somebody says something like, let's say that we want to get all of the rooms. You know, that might be hard to edit if you want to just say, let's get all of the rooms. You know, that might not really be, you know, taking out the, let's say we want to get all of the rooms, let's get all of the rooms. You can't just, you think you can cut it out, but it just doesn't sound good. Um, if you want, you can amplify, oh, yeah, no, I had something where I was going to point out noise hiss, and then Audacity was so great, it stopped having the hiss. Um, yeah, so there you go. So it can be magic once you uh, do things. Um, Skype and room noise, like Skype noise, if you are recording over Skype, sometimes you get some noise there, that's hard to edit out, room noise is hard to edit out. Fixing loud and quiet is actually pretty easy. You know, if one person's really loud and one person's really quiet, you can fix that pretty easily. The problem is, like, you can tell I'm pretty loud. You could make me softer, but I still sound kind of aggressive. And so that's really weird to hear, like, if I just talk like this, but I, like, when I talk like this and I'm really low, my tone has changed. And it's a lot nicer tone, it's a lot smoother tone, I'm not yelling at you anymore. But when I talk in my normal voice, I'm kind of yelling at you. And so lowering that volume, you have to be careful when you're doing that. And similarly, you know, a soft person talking really loudly can sound a little weird. It can really be just weird to hear it loudly. 
So you have to be a little careful when you're kind of fixing loud and quiet. Okay, so you've got your file, you've edited it, it's perfect, you're gonna put it up online. What's a podcast? Yes, question. So the question is, how do you find an audio engineer? And the answer is, that's a really good question. Um, I would start, like I, I have a friend who's an audio engineer. So I was kind of like, for a while, I was like, oh man, the second I get a budget, I am totally hiring you to do my sound, because you are awesome. Um, I would say try listening to other podcasts and see what, what they're using, who they're using. It'll usually be in the end credits. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people here, I think, are do-it-yourself versions, so they're like, ah, I don't want to do that. Um, so that's actually the first time I've had that question, and it's a great question, though. So I would see what they're using um, and what they're, you know, what they're charging, what their, um, their things are charging. I think we pay something like $300 an episode, which is actually pretty good. Um, but there's also a range of services you can get. You can get, um, you can get filler words, just filler words taken out. You can get filler words taken out and, um, you know, smoothing of, of sounds. You can also get ones that will do like a transcript, a full transcript for you, you know, so that you can have, um, you can have the transcript, you know, and just the words online. Question. Say, hey, you know, so for the folks playing at home in the that can't hear it, the suggestions were go to your local like real music shop, not like a Best Buy, right? Go to or even your local music shop, like a piano, uh, you know, like a you know, something that'll sell guitars and pianos and stuff like that, and ask them, sound systems, they'll sell PAs, amplifiers, ask them, you know, if, you know, if they know of any audio engineers. Um, my guess is, if you ask them, they will be, they will say, I'm one. <laughs> uh, they might not be for hire, but, you know, they'll certainly know people who are looking. You might just walk into your music store and you might see pamphlets for it. Also in small towns, um, local radio stations. Yep. Local radio stations will have them. Local radio stations are also great because you might be able to use their equipment. And you might end up saying, wait, maybe I'll just do a radio show, put it on public radio, right? Put it on your local public radio station, and then you've got the equipment there. They might put it as a podcast for you. Like, you don't, yeah. Yes, I was just thinking that. They, ha they might have training at the local audio stations, so they help you use the equipment, they help you figure out what, what, what's good, what's not good. You might actually get to do some audio for another, you might be able to do audio for a, a different uh, radio show, yep. Uh, there's actually a website with my friend called Gearsluts. Okay, so G-E-A-R-S-L-U-T-Z dot com? Yes. Okay. Just audio engineers and producers. Just audio engineers and producers. Yeah, so there's probably a jobs board, yeah. I'm sure if you Google searched for hire an audio engineer, uh, you'd probably find a lot. There's a lot of them out there. The, the other thing is local musicians. A lot of musicians are, are audio engineers in and of themselves because they're very picky about how their own music sounds. Um, and with the advent of all this technology, people are mixing their own records. When they, well, records, they're not records anymore. When they make their own CDs now, they can mix it, they can record it and mix it and do everything on their computer, send it out to a shop to get CDs made. I mean, I have some CDs here for you guys if you want. Um, they're just podcast CDs. You can actually just download the podcast for free, but I made these because they're easy to put in someone's hand and then a week later when they don't remember all of the things they were supposed to go download, they'll see this and, and it'll be a physical reminder. Um, but that's what, that's what we did. We're like, here are some audio files, here's an, here's an HTML index file, you know, put it in your computer, you're done, and we just, you know, paid people money to make the jacket and whatever, and they made the CD, and, and it's a CD. Yes? I think that's the other, the other important thing is that if you're going to go down the road of getting an audio engineer, don't think or expect that they're going to do it for nothing, because yeah. the ones that will say they'll do it for nothing Generally speaking, the ones you don't want to be with. Right. Well, audio and engineers are, you know, are not cheap, but they're like everything else. Just like a software developer who says they'll do it for nothing, right? Well, a lot of us develop in open source. That doesn't mean we're bad. It just means that we're committed to the project. So you may have an audio engineer that wants to get experience, and you have to decide, is it worth it, right, for the free thing to get experience with that? Now, 
you know, I always listen to every podcast after it's done. Um, I listen to it, and that's when I make sure the show notes are all good, and I put the show notes in good HTML as opposed to just written out. Um, and I always miss a quote somewhere, so my links are always bad. Um, but, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, your audio quality is, is, you know, you get what you pay for and make sure that you're doing it right. And make sure that even if you're paying them a lot of money and they're not doing what you, you know, if you're paying them money and they're leaving in ums and whatever, talk to them about it. You know, make sure you're getting your, your value for what you're paying. And if, you know, if your budget is free and you have volunteers, that's great. Um, because you may want, you may have someone who wants to get into it and they want to be able to put their name on your podcast. Well, that's free for you to say, well, I'll just say it's produced by, you know, Rich Goyette Audio Services. That's great. Um, I mean, we're paying them, but, you know, it's, uh, it can be good exposure for them. Um, but do you want to be their learning curve? Um, and probably the answer is yes. Look, we're all, we're all open source here, right? It's Linux Conf. So, you know, if we, we believe in giving people chances and things like that. Um, but yeah, be, do be careful, as with everything. So, you've got your podcast recorded. Now what? A podcast is just an RSS feed. That's all it is. It's an RSS feed with audio things in it. There's different kinds of tags and things like that. But most people here know what an RSS feed is. It's, you know, well-formed XML. Um, you know, we all have Google Reader or whatever to read our own, you know, blog posts or whatnot or Twitter people have now that they have RSS to Twitter. Um, thank you, Selena Deckelman. And uh, so how do, you, how do you do this? You have to submit it. When you have an RSS feed, you then submit it to podcast directories, including iTunes. Now, my suggestion would be when you're thinking of doing a podcast, get a few podcasts under your belt. Do three or four. And when I say do, I mean do the interview, record it edit it and get it ready to go, then make the RSS feed, and the RSS feed will have two or three when you begin, then submit it to the podcast directories. iTunes, like everything else, they're gonna look at your podcast. If you only have one podcast, it's gonna, you know, it, it takes them, I don't know, when I submitted it, it took them six to eight weeks to actually, you know, put it up. Um, the more you have, the more, the better your chances will be because they'll say, okay, you know, if you have three of them up, then you're, you're pretty good and, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna do this and, and they can see that your content, you know, is not, you know, it's, your content is gonna be um, consistent you, because you already have a few and you're not, you don't just have one. Make sure that however you do it, you can get statistics. If you want statistics. For example, I actually have it on a blog post and the, and the blog thing that I'm using actually shows how many times it's been played, because you can play it directly on the thing, and how many times it's been downloaded, which is kind of neat. Um, but if I didn't have that statistics, I mean, how do I know how many people are listening to it? iTunes doesn't give you that statistics iTunes actually can't give you those statistics because iTunes is actually different in most countries. So for example, we have a couple of Italian listeners, a couple of Norwegian listeners who said, oh, we gave you feedback, we gave you five stars and we rated it, you know, you know, and we were like, we can't see it. And it's because it's on, you know, the Italian iTunes and the Norwegian I iTunes. So make sure that you can get statistics, um, however you do it. So what I would recommend, don't do what I did, I just submitted my feed to, to iTunes, and the problem is I actually am using some kind of content management system to do it, um, and I want to upgrade it and change it, because now a couple of years have passed, there's a new module to use, and, uh, but if I upgrade and change it, I'm worried that all of the RSS feeds are gonna go away, and that would be poor, because I, you know, I don't want to wait six weeks if I have to resubmit it to iTunes. I have listeners, right? They listen to the podcast. So um, feedburner.com is really good. They give you statistics. Um, and if you do something like put your site to feedburner and then point iTunes to your feedburner, then you've got, and feedburner.com, by the way, is free. It's not owned by Google, so it's probably not called feedburner, but it will still redirect. Um, but if you do that, then you won't run into the problem I have. You only have to repoint FeedBurner to it. You don't have to break the iTunes link because that's the, it's not the problem breaking the iTunes link. The problem is if you break it and you can't actually say you know get iTunes to Apple to understand that no, this is the same podcast. You're gonna have to wait again to get it approved um, because changing the URL later will be easier. Um, and it allows ID3 tags and embedded pictures and all that fun stuff so that when you actually go to, uh, to iTunes over here, you know, you can see this picture here um, and you can embed pictures. All of these are embedded stuff. Um, and you can embed ID3 tags, which is great because if you want people to know that your, um, that your, uh, you know, information about it, like who's, who's the co-host, who's the host, if you interview a special subject this week. So it's kind of nice. Uh, web hosting. So this is kind of important. Keep your audio files small. Not just because someone in some distant remote country is gonna download it, because they will, um, but also because of bandwidth, right? You don't wanna run out of bandwidth. Um, mostly your audio could probably be mono, not stereo. You're gonna save half the files right there. 
Um, we actually just, we were coming up with some ideas for our podcast. We we just recorded episode 125, so that, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, we were like, well, maybe we could, you know, some, oh no, somebody somebody sent us feedback. Of, like, it'd be great. So we start off the podcast the same way. Um, you know, after a short intro, we say like, I'm Shiri. My co-host goes, I'm Jerry. And this is our SQL, the MySQL database podcast. And someone was like, that'd be awesome if you could come through different channels. Like one ear would be Shiri talking and one ear would be Jerry talking just for the intro and outro, not for the whole thing. And I was like, but then we'd have to go stereo and that's going to be double the size and I'm not willing to do that. So that's a trick that you can do. You do your whole editing, whatever, in stereo and then when you save it, save it as mono. Make sure it's not going to end up costing you a ton of money. Um, you can use something like Libsyn.com. So if you upload your audio there, um, they will host your podcast for free. Um, again, if they ever go away, then you don't have control of your audio files. Maybe that's not so great, but you know it's a trade-off, right? It's the cloud before the cloud existed. Um, OurMedia.com is similar. I use DreamHost.com because I just have a website again with the content management. Um, DreamHost.com gives you free bandwidth. Like the bandwidth, they don't count the bandwidth. It can ban well, it's not free, but it's some ridiculously high number that you'd never hit. Um, and to give you a sense of how, oh, if you have a tech podcast, technocation.org can host it with free bandwidth. Technocation.org is a uh, not-for-profit 501c3 in the States um, that's dedicated to um, educating um, IT stuff. Educational resources for IT professionals. That's what it is. Um, so here's a snapshot of uh, last summer. So you may think, well, you know, look, this is a 22.46 megabyte file for 48 minutes, 50 minutes, so almost an hour, 22 megabytes. That's pretty small. That's great. But there was 1,506 downloads. Similarly, over 2,000 downloads of a 20 megabyte file, 16 megabyte file, 1,600. Um, you know, this is this adds up to a lot. So here, here was my uh, my um, dream host daily bandwidth usage for technocation.org. The total at the bottom here, right? I've put it 142 gigabytes for one month. Yeah, imagine what the bill would have been if I was paying per gig. No, oh, 10 gigabytes. Yeah, no, I won't go over that. So you have to be careful uh, because it, this would cost a lot of money, and then you would need sponsors. Uh, how do you promote your podcast? Well, putting it on iTunes is a big one. I have to say. It's Apple, it's evil, right? But it's what people use. Um, social media, tweet new, new episodes. And I like to use predictable links, right? Now, if you're popular, people might hack that. But I use bit.ly and I use our SQL. So bit.ly slash our SQL 100 gets you to episode 100. Now, you could certainly go and make any link you want, be like bit.ly, you know, our SQL 200. Please don't do that because that wouldn't be nice. Um, but so far, we haven't had any problems with that. Um, but using predictable links is great because then when you go back and you're like, oh, you know what? In episode 7, we talked about this. Well, what's the link for episode 7? Oh, man, I have to copy and paste that. Um, having short links is also really good for when you're tweeting. Also, we've made uh, Facebook and Google Plus groups um, where we just announced it there. Um, those aren't huge. Those might have like couple dozen people in them. Um, I think more people tweet, because people will retweet, people will retweet it also. Um, Facebook group page, like I said, cross promote podcasts and events, right? So um, we've done a lot where there's a bunch of MySQL stuff at OSCON, right? So we are like, oh, let's talk about OSCON. Let's promote OSCON. Maybe, and we've gotten discount codes from OSCON. So we've done cross promotion, right? Where someone who's interested in OSCON and doesn't know about the podcast might listen to this one because, you know, OSCON might retweet about it or anything like that. Get as much feedback as possible in as many ways as possible. Now, I will give you one caveat. I've turned off commenting on the, on the posts that we do because comment spam is just a pain. I hate comment spam. So we've turned off comment spam, but we do, they can tweet us, they can email us. We have a, a free phone number they can call us at. So not, a, not an 800 number like free like that, like a free, it we doesn't cost us anything. It's a Boston number, but with Skype these days, anyone can call that kind of stuff for very cheap or free. Um, so, you know, audio, you can do also an audio option, audio.com. I don't know if that's still around. I think it is. Um, it'll, you basically, audio.com is a site where you can um, set up an account and people can leave you audio messages like through their computer or whatever. So instead of calling, right, they can just do it right through their computer. So that's kind of a way to, you know, get a quote unquote voicemail. Um, other considerations. What are you going to call your podcast? This might sound stupid, right? 
Okay, what are you going to call it? Well, what does it do? So what you want to call it is what people are going to search on. For example, we call this the MySQL database podcast. And when Oracle started sponsoring it, they asked us to put the word community in it. So it's now called the MySQL database community podcast. Why did I call it the MySQL database community podcast? What other MySQL thing is there out there? It's obviously a database. Well, now when people, if you go to iTunes and you search on database, this is like the third or second podcast that comes up. You're searching for databases, you find it. You're searching for MySQL, it's, it's like the only one there. Well, the only one that's you know ongoing. There's a couple others that you know, did 10 episodes and, and left. So think about what people, what you want people to search for when you're doing it. If you're talking about Linux, you might want to have, you know, you don't want to have Linux, Unix, I mean, this isn't a tag, Linux, Unix, open source, all that kind of stuff. You know, but you might want to say like the Linux open source podcast. Now that could be tough because there might be 12 other Linux open source podcasts. So you have to think of what's already out there. I um, mean, also, you know, what domain name can you get, blah, blah, blah. We chose our SQL because it's, it's not my SQL, right? It's our SQL. So it kind of gives that feeling of community anyway. Um, so that's, that's part of it. But we, we use this sub subtitle. Are you going to have a theme song? We totally have a theme song. I'll play it for you now because it's, it's really awesome. Um, our audio engineer is also a musician, and he, uh, he, wrote, he wrote the song. And we, he, it's actually a song of his. And then we co-opted it and changed the words. So you can hear the whole intro here. Welcome to our SQL episode 124. When do you want it? This week we discuss Linux IO scheduler. So we're 12 seconds into it and you already know if you've heard it or not. How awesome is that, right? <laughs> When do you come up with the jingle? The episode zero does not have the jingle, but I did actually have other things in episode zero. We do have some time. We have about five minutes. So let me play this one. So something like let's talk for a little while again. I actually went to um, the Podsafe music directory. I think it's called podshow.com. And that has, you know, um, you're allowed to reuse it. I, like the, the licensing is such that you're allowed to put it on your podcast. And that also has like people, like artists will put covers of, the, of songs or something like that or their own songs. So you can get a lot of music there. Um, and then I also had some stuff here. Let's see. This was the thank you song. So that's, that's kind of cute. Um, so, so yeah, where do you find it there? Um, if you have a song you like in general, you can probably, um, you know, make some kind of little parody or whatever. So musical interludes, so between sections, we have a little thing. So we have like news and events and then the main topic and then we talk about where you can see us, so what we're going to be speaking at. Um, so we have sections and we have like a little, little drum beat that goes like ba -dump between them, so you kind of know what they are. We're actually thinking about putting chapters in it, because apparently you can put chapters in podcasts now, which is pretty cool. I don't know how long you could have done it for, probably forever, but, um, but it actually worked, like the interfaces actually work with it too, because that's like, how do you go, yep, how do you go, um, how do you go to the next one without going to the next podcast? Um, but the interfaces are good like that. If you want to see how that works, um, a really good podcast is the Coverville podcast. It does a lot of covers. And every song is a new chapter, which is pretty cool. Be consistent with publishing. I don't care. We publish weekly. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work. Especially when, um, you know, like I'm traveling, right? So nine and like we're, we're recording at instead of nine in the morning Eastern time in the U.S. and six in the morning um, Pacific time for my co-host. Now we're recording at noon. No, it's noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, which is like 7 a.m. or, yeah, 7 a.m. this time. So last week I had to get up at 7 a.m. and be ready with my voice. Be consistent with the publishing. We publish every Friday, maybe Saturday if I don't get the file up um, or if our, our publisher is busy. But, um, you know, do it weekly or every fortnight or every month. If you just do it like Helter Skelter, for some reason, and this is weird, I don't know why, for some reason people will like be like, well, I haven't heard a podcast for a while, so I'll just turn it off. Which is weird because usually I just keep it going and if I don't get a new podcast, I don't even think about it. Um, other considerations, uh, section headers, right? So we have events and stuff like that. I said we had musical interludes, but we also have section headers. So we'll say in events, here's what's happening. 
in training, here's the MySQL trainings that are happening and the cities they're happening in. You also want to be careful not to go too long with those. We were going for a while and we were saying, well, Oracle's training in like Brisbane and Boston on, well, they're Brisbane on June 21st and then Boston on July 27th. And that just took forever because there are three companies that do this, Oracle, SkySQL, and Percona that all does training. And it was taking, for, it was like three minutes of just us rattling off cities and dates. So now we just say like in January and February, they're, or February and March, they're going to be in these cities cities. Boom. And we link in the show notes to where you want to where they want to see them. That way if you're in one of those cities, you might say, "Oh, great, they're coming. Let me see which training class they're doing." So yeah, we also need to say what training class. Like is it for administrators? Is it for developers? Is it for performance? What is it? We don't do that anymore. So do you try to um, you know, think as a listener would. Do you have a sign off? You know, we have something every every week that says, you know, you can download, uh, let's see, you've been listening to our SQL, the MySQL Database Community Podcast. Here are your hosts. Here's it's who's produced by and who the sponsors are. And, um, you know, show notes and past episodes can be found at OurSQL.com. So we have a little sign off. Identifying features before one minute. Um, you can say before 30 seconds, but basically I got really annoyed when I was like listening to podcasts and I'd get a minute into it and they'd be like, oh, I've heard this one before. Uh, do you want to do live streaming? Again, you know, maybe you don't want to spend the time editing, so you're just going to do it live. That's cool. How are you going to live stream it? Ustream.com is, is a, a popular one. Um, copyright. Oh, see, music.podshow.com. That's, uh, you know, you want to be careful about copyright. You can't just play a song by a commercial artist and use it. It doesn't work that way. And then that's it. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, um, on Twitter, I'm at Shiri. Uh, you can call the comment line at plus one, six one seven. Oh, I don't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, and I also have some podcast CDs. If you guys want, if you're interested in, you can just download it at OurSQL.com, but sometimes physical reminders are good. So I'll put them out during tea on like a, I think there's like a freebie table or an empty table. Oh, no, it was a food table. Find me. I'm around this whole week. So yeah, question? So the question is about podcast aggregators, and you mean to listen to podcasts? Um, well, I listen to iTunes. I'm really lazy, and I have an iPhone. So um, I did. I, I was using Android for a while, and I was using Double Twist, but that wasn't so great. Um, does anyone have any recommendations for podcast aggregators? The thing that's nice about ZPod Plus is you could download it. Mm -hmm. Oh, so ZPod Plus allowed you to... Oh, I, f I feel like I heard of something that allows you to do that recently. You know, I would say Google search for stream podcast and see what you get because I, I know that I have recently heard of software that allows you to stream podcasts and it was not called ZPod because I would have remembered that. Um, you suggested don't submit to iTunes until you've got a number of episodes up. Mm-hmm. So the question is, if you're say, if you have your podcast on a schedule, um, and I said to have a couple of podcasts first before you submit it to iTunes, what do you do? Um, I would say get your regular schedule, and then post them on that schedule. Now, if your schedule is monthly, do you want to wait three months before you submit it to iTunes? Maybe not. So what you might want to say is do it like weekly for the first couple of weeks and just say, look, here's one and next week we'll have another one. Um, and then, you know, the next week we'll have another one and then say, okay, we're, we're going monthly. You know, it's a monthly podcast, but we have a few bonus ones, things like that. Um, or, you know, just save it and do, do three months and then wait because, you know, you're going to be generating your own word of mouth uh, from that. And now the other thing is you can submit it to iTunes and I don't know where their backlog is. But if they're backlog, you could take the chance of, right, it takes six to eight weeks. It might take more than that now. So you might have one submit it, the RSS feed, and then by the time they get around to it, there's more. Um, you and then you? Do, oh, you have a, okay. Uh, back there? Two questions. Sure. The first one is about your analytics, um, whether or not you got, if there's any better way of knowing, you know, where they're listening to it, how they're listening to it, how, what time are they cutting off and turning the podcast? Second question along those lines is, do you have kind of a magic number in your head for how long your podcast is or what works in terms of interview timing? Things like that. 
Right. So FeedBurner has good statistics because um, podcasts are usually downloaded. I, there are not good numbers of who like who listens to five minutes and then turns it off. Um, I do have number of plays on the website, but that doesn't come through, and that's you know that might be a way that you could get more metrics. Um, I'm not really that interested. I care about how many people I have, and it's interesting to see the numbers fluctuate and, and go down. But I don't care if I have one listener or a thousand, as or, or ten thousand, as long as I'm like help. Like that's my thing is I want to help people. And the question is about time of your podcast. We try to keep it between half an hour and an hour. <laughs> that's a long range, um, but we we know once we get started talking, like we've had some that are maybe 25 minutes, but for the most part, we're we're really fighting hard to keep under an hour. Um, we, we have started to learn that if we start really going over an hour, we just make it two parts. It's, it's a little harder on the audio engineer, but it's great because we also do it weekly. So it's kind of a little bonus for like, oh man, we could do this in two parts. We recently started to do um, a series on MySQL 5.6 because it's going to be GA any day now. And we're like, okay, let's talk about the new features. Let's talk about the stuff that's going to be you know, released in the new features. And we were looking at it and I was like, wow, well the optimizer alone has 11 new features, much less replication and all this stuff. So let's start doing it on optimizer, on the optimizer new features, just that. And then that was, it was 11 new features. It's a lot to explain. And so that's going to be two podcasts just in and of itself. I'm like, we've got probably two months worth of, you know, eight podcasts just of the features that are coming out. And hopefully by the time, you know, we finish the series, the new release will actually be out and it'll be GA. So um, definitely give yourself time if you have, you know, if you're recording interviews and you're doing it monthly, you know, bank up some interviews. Um, and also don't be afraid to deviate from a schedule, just tell people. So for example, um, last summer, back when back when the co-host was Sarah Novotny, and it was um, the summer, right? She was the co-chair of OSCON, and so we were like, you know what? In the summer, we're going every other week, and that really worked for us. So don't be afraid to change it up. Um, yep. And it, we're, we're out of time. And I would say the only other tip that I would have is try not to say, and next time we're going to do X, unless you know you're going to do it. So that's it.